Hello everyone, today I got so many new beta discoveries to share with you, and I can't believe this is already part 6. I tried to spend as much time as possible on the beta right now, testing these things for you. And the biggest motivation is definitely that I can see people are being so grateful for these videos. So thank you so much for this. Anyway, enjoy this video. A lot of you have requested to see the druid talent Omen of Clarity, and if this is going to be able to proc from for example snowballs, baskins, and other things. I've spent more than 30 minutes testing this on the beta and I can't get this to work no matter which of these spells I try to use. Even when I use Fairy Fire Fell, nothing happens, and it's the same with the food buff that I tried to test with the electrical charge. Like I mentioned, I spent more than 30 minutes trying to test this and I even purchased 100 snowballs, nothing happened. So it seems like Omen of Clarity will not be working from any of the things that you listed in the comment. So would you like to get some good news? because I have some good news for you right now. Philip posted this comment, telling me to enable all spell ranks in the spell book for macros to work. In the previous videos, all my tests has been without enabling this feature, and therefore my cast sequence macros didn't work. But pay attention to what happened the moment I enabled all the spell ranks. Now I will be able to use the cast sequence macro. So thank you Philip for pointing this out, and now I can finally make a bug report about this. I guess a lot of you would also like to know if you can use a one button macro as a retribution paladin because of this, and yes, you will be able to. Look at the damage right here, and I only press one button. I don't need to do anything else besides pressing this button, and I kill everything. What is your opinion about these macros? Let me know in a comment below the video. In the comments, Soapstone would like to know if the orange undead horse is in the game. This was originally added in patch 3.2. Right now, I'm able to purchase this mount. But we gotta remember this is the beta, so everything can change before the release of Wrath of the Lich King. In the previous video, I mentioned druids are able to use pole arms in the next expansion. This is still correct, but I also showed a clip where I tried to level up my pole arm skills at a target dummy. In that clip, I forgot to equip a pole arm, and instead I tried to level up my pole arm skills with a staff. A big mistake. Therefore, I've made a new clip equipping a pole arm and trying to level up my weapon skills at the target dummies. I can confirm you are not able to level up your weapon skills this way on the beta right now, and I doubt it will be a thing in Wrath of the Lich King either, because it wasn't like this in the original game. One of you would also like to see if the Dalaran Dual Crafter token will be tradable, or you will be able to sell these to other players. But no, these are bind on pickup, or well, they're character bound. It seems like they have also removed the possibility to change titanium powder into Dalaran Dual Crafter tokens. But like I mentioned, the Jewel Crafter tokens will not be tradable, because these are stored in the currency tab together with badges and other stuff. But in one way, you will be able to sell your token, because you can exchange this into a Dragon's Eye, and this material is needed as a Jewel Crafter to craft the Jewel Crafter specific epic gems. A lot of you would also like to know about the Druid Flight form in Wrath the Lich King, and in this expansion, you will no longer need to do the quest chain, instead you will need to be level 71, but you also need to make sure you purchase your epic flying skill. When you have taken care of this, you will also be able to learn the swift flight form at your druid trainer. There has also been a request to test if the ink trader is in the game right now on the beta, and yes, it definitely is. So if you wish to exchange your ink of the sea into some other inks, then it seems like you will be able to do this, but remember, everything can change. In the previous video, I tested level 70 dungeons from Burning Crusade, and the experience you get as a level 70, and yes, it's fairly high, but therefore people would also like me to test how it is in heroic mode. On heroic mode, all the monsters has way more health, but also do way more damage, so hopefully the experience is a bit better. The experience I got on heroic mode was 2641, and that's the exact same as normal mode. So if you plan to level with Burning Crusade dungeons at the release of Wrath of the Lich King, then there's no reason to do this on heroic mode. There has also been a request to test the experience you get close to Black Temple, and these monsters will give you the following experience as a level 70. But close to Black Temple, you also have another amazing spot, and here you will be able to AoE farm as a mage, but also as a protection paladin. And the monsters here also give you a fairly decent amount of experience. In Burning Crusade, protection paladin tire items always increase the spell damage, but in Wrath the Lich King this will change. For example, the tier 6 items no longer increase the spell damage. And this is even the same case with other plate items that use to increase the spell damage. 
In the pre-patch, a new stat will be introduced and two other stats will be removed from the game. The name of the new stat is Spell Power, and what it used to be was either plus healing or plus spell damage. So there will no longer be these two stats in the game, and therefore healers but also casters will now use the same stat. On the beta, I have 784 spell power, and in Burning Crusade, I have 784 spell damage, so it's going to be the exact same. In Burning Crusade, your bonus healing will be way higher compared to the spell power you will get in Wrath of the Lich King, but you don't need to worry about this because you will still heal for pretty much the same amount. I've also been asked to test the escape artist, so the gnome racial, together with the PvP trinket. So if you use the PvP trinket, will it then put a cooldown on the escape artist? This is not the case, so it will work the exact same way as it did in Burning Crusade. Have you ever wondered what will happen if you log out in the level 60 version of Snacks Ramas, so the 40 man raid, and you copy your character to the Wrath of the Lich King beta? This we will find out today, because I have a mage who are locked out in this raid. So far, so good, we have the loading screen, and we are also spawning inside the raid, but after a few seconds I'm being teleported out of the raid, back to Dalaran, and I've never been in this major city on this character. If this happens in the pre-patch, so if you log out in Burning Crusade, and in the pre-patch you log into Dalaran, it's going to be insane, so I need to report this bug, that's for sure. But I had to retry this to see if I could get out of the raid without being teleported. So I blinked into the portal, and for some reason I end up in Dragon Bite at the new location for the level 80 version of Naxxramas. Right now I'm just so excited to see what will happen in the pre-patch. So I'll definitely try to do this trick and then in the pre-patch I'll log into the character to see where I spawn. And for those of you who also noticed the debuff I got inside next Remus, then you can read the text right here at the top right corner. In Blasted Lands you can find these creatures near the Dark Portal, and these you will not be able to kill unless you're on the quest. In Burning Crusade I usually take advantage of this by attacking these and leveling up my weapon skills, but on the beta I'm not able to do this so maybe they're going to disable this either in the pre-patch or in Wrath of the Lich King. Some of the hunters out there would like to know if you can keep kiting a target without it evading. And yes, you will be able to do this, you just need to make sure that you once in a while hit the target, else it will start to evade. I still have so many things I need to test on the beta right now, and these I will continue to share in the upcoming videos. But you gotta remember you also need to post a comment if there's anything specifically you would like to see. Alright, so that's also about it for this video. If you wish to see more of these in the future, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post part 7 or some of the other ones. But yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching and have an amazing day. Peace.